My name is Jaber. Sexuality makes me queer. Um, and queer to me, and seeing people and seeing experiences and um, and I just love being around that openness and vulnerability with other people who are queer identified as well. And um, there's just so much more possibilities with identifying as queer. And so um, that's why I'm, yeah, I'm queer. <laughs> I would say my biggest fetish is feet, um, which I'm really excited to shoot uh, for Queer Porn TV. Um, I would say it came from a really young age and uh, I like started masturbating with dolls and I used their feet for the masturbating with and it, it just innately happened that way and um, and ever since then I think there's a lot of shame with with certain fetishes and, and feet being one of them it's like uh, you know we're on it all the time and they they smell because they're supposed to smell and um, but I just feel like I, I there's just something about them and I, I love having attention towards them and having my feet um, being loved in a way that other parts of my body can't be because feet are just so sensitive and so like yeah <laughs> my first experience was um, uh, geared for straight straight audiences porn um, I found it on my brother's computer and um, and I kept using that site which was totally the wrong site to go on anyways um, and and then my first queer porn experience was two years ago I like moved to the bay and um, my roommate at the time introduced me to Jizz Lee scene on Crash Pad and um, and then I and then from there like started experiencing other websites and other um, performers and directors and it's changed my way of this perception of um, something that wasn't made by people like who identify as me or made for me to feeling so a part of even watching porn scenes is like I feel so like these are my community. These are people that I would be friends with. These would be people like I've already fucked or want to fuck. And so it's more personal in that way. And I feel like most mainstream um, hetero based porn is very much, I don't associate with the way that they um, like to get fucked or, or dirty talking the way that they dirty talk. So I just feel more yeah at home with queer porn. In general. My upbringing has really affected the way that I I see myself and I see myself as a performer. Um, I grew up in a really religious household. Um, it's still fairly religious and um, we never talked about sex growing up. We It was just very much everything was not talked about because it was super shameful and like unheard of so why would we talk about it? Why would we talk about safe sex? Why would we talk about um, sexuality? So um, being in a really repressed situation and home setting like that um, has, I think in a lot of ways, made me way kinkier than I probably could have been. <laughs> like, just because, um, you know, when, when someone doesn't talk about something, then like all these sexual feelings and repression, um, like for instance, like my feet, I never really explored that option, even though I've had like tingly sensations since like childhood. Um, and so now that I um, feel more comfortable in myself and feel more comfortable in my sexuality and um, being photographed and filmed and such, uh, it just feels like I, I'm kind of reclaiming all these experiences that I should have had growing up. And um, like it just feels good to be myself and be open about it to people who also are living in repressed situations and are younger and um, yeah so that's how my upbringing has affected me. So what attracts me to porn I am a very visual person and I I love hearing and seeing and um, experiencing different porn projects and, and films um, that kind of have more of an artistic point of view um, 
So that's why a lot of the things that I choose to watch on my own time, sometimes it's like gay porn. I love gay porn. Oh my God. <laughs> but also like queer porn um, is because uh, of the shot quality and of the storylines. Um, and I just like masturbating. And so like masturbating with visual, you know, um, visual help is always good. And that's why I mostly watch porn a lot. If I could um, have sex in public and there would be no consequences and everyone would see me, hands down a library. Um, I grew up going to the library a lot. I, I wanted to be a librarian and I did that in school for a minute. I, I think there's such a taboo of, uh, you know, not being able to do certain things at the library, let alone have sex, um, just like being quiet. And, and so everything about that, uh, about not being able to do those things makes me want to do it even more. And I would love to be pushed on all, oh God, I don't know which aisle of the library, but I just want dusty books around me and, and getting slammed. Back and, in the middle of the stash. Yeah, <laughs> just like slammed and, and being fucked. I and think I want to... And you have to stay quiet? Well, no, <laughs> but that could be a twist, yeah. I don't, I, I do like sensory deprivation, mm -hmm. so like being like maybe gagged or... Um, but I would feel like if we're already at the library and everyone's going to see us, we might as well make some rockets. Make a bunch so. of That'd be really If anyone has a library. <laughs> <laughs> if I had all the funds and all the time in the world, because I just don't have that right now, I would kind of do um, scene shots in people's bedrooms, um, whether lovers or friends, and... Um, specifically call out to people who have like stuffed animals or like teddy bears or blankies that they're like have never been able to let go but they like keep a part of their lives and I think it'd be really really hot to see like solo masturbation scenes with them interacting with their like you know their thing that they can't let go of from childhood because I, I think there's you know they're I'm so into these taboo things, but I, I think that uh, there's a lot of shame of people not um, accepting those who have this like childhood aspect um, still a part of their mm -hmm. lives. And um, a physical manifestation is kind of like you kind of like put in your closet when a date comes over because you're like, I don't want them to know I have a teddy bear, but I do. I have one. And I don't. I think that it's um, it's very comforting to me and it feels really safe. So I feel like when sometimes when I masturbate, I like hold you know hold on to or cuddle my bear and fuck off or um, so I think that'd be really cute and a uh, vulnerable and not super fetishy um, aspect of like seeing people for how they truly are when they're like by themselves and how they feel like supported and safe. And I think that would be really cute to film. I would say, um, I would say Jizzly. Um, for, I, I would be the president of <laughs> Jizzly's fan club. Um, although there's like many fan clubs out there for them. Um, I, I had the opportunity to work with them at Crash Pad and, um, they just have one of the most kind of souls and and I think I had this kind of misrepresent or this misconception that porn stars were just really not very friendly even though like now I'm just like I take that you know everyone's super sweet super nice super tender um but I would say just being my first encounter and experience with someone who's been in the porn industry who's revolutionized gender queer performers who it's a person of color who, like, I just really admire them and their, like, their outlook on life and um, their politics and, um, yeah, so I would probably choose oh. that. I, I've never been into food play and there just happened to be a carrot around and I think it's really hard to think of um, edible food as being an extension of one oneself so I would think of myself getting having my carrot cock blown and sucked on and awesome. 
Yeah, I don't know if I would fuck someone with it, but I definitely would want oral pleasure that way.